Um, I hope that you guys were all able to tune in last week to listen to teacher Jessica's story and she talked about God's perfect tent. Um, and I hope that you guys have been thinking about this week about your story and the lesson that you learned. Um, and then also just about the greater story that we've been talking about over the last month or so, um, which is about the Israelites and Moses and how God has been with them, guiding them to the promised land that he's promised to them for years and years prior to this. Um, and just the great faith that Moses has in God and how he is always looking to God and trusting God. Um, even when crazy things seem to be happening around them, they're just learning all these great lessons. And the biggest lesson that they're learning is that God is always there for them and that he is always providing for them. And he is just the God that is there for them all the time, no matter what happened or what wrongdoings they do. Um, today, I'm going to read our Bible verse before we jump into the story. Um, our story today is called Top Secret Spies, so it's a little fun and interesting. Um, our memory verse is Psalm 56, 11, in God I trust and am not afraid. What can man do to me? And that's an important memory verse. And I want you guys to think about that and how it will apply to our lesson. Um, but also uh, a great thing about that lesson or that memory verse is that it's saying that if I have God on my side, is there anything that man can do to me? Right? And the answer is no, because God is there for you always, and God is all-powerful. God is all-knowing. There is nothing that any human could do to you that God would not be able to um, punish them for, um, and God is more powerful than any other human. And if you are with God and you're tr trusting in God, then he will protect you from the things that he wants to protect you from, from anything that a man could do against you. Um, so, do you remember Moses and the Israelites, who we've been talking about the last couple of months, where they were camped just outside of Canaan, which is the promised land that we've been talking about? It looked like they were going to be moving into the land really soon, which is exciting because God has been telling about this land for years and years and years. This isn't just something they learned about the day before. They've been learning about this for years and years. Some people growing up, they heard about the promised land they were going to get to go to. God told Moses to send 12 spies to explore the land that he was going to give them, the land of Canaan. And the reason for this, um, or why do you think that God wanted the Israelites to spy on the land? That's a little weird, right? When you're going to move into a new city, you don't have to go spy on the land. You just move right in, right? Well, remember, God had already decided to give this land to the Israelites. And where it was then, there wasn't Israelites living in the city. It was a different type of people that were living there. And so they weren't just going to let the Israelites come in and take over their land. So that's why they needed to send the spies. Moses selected a man who was well-liked and a good leader from each of the 12 tribes. So within Israelites, there were 12 different tribes, or you can think about it as 12 different groups that they were in. And so he picked one person from each to make sure it was a good representative, um, but that there was one person from each tribe, 12 tribes, so there were 12 total spies, just like God had asked. Moses told these men to find out about the land and the people and the food. So off the spies went to find out about the land of Canaan, and Canaan is the promised land. Spies needed plenty of time to travel into Canaan and find out about the land that God had promised to give them. The Israelites waited and waited for the spies to return, and while they waited, they were probably thought about this wonderful place that God was going to get them. They just had heard that it was good land, but once the spies returned, they would know just how good it was. They would get to know, like they said, they had to learn about the people and the food. Maybe there were foods there or different types of meat they hadn't tried yet. So they were excited to get to learn about this new land. Finally, the day came when the 12 spies arrived back from the Isra to the Israelites camp. Two of the spies were carrying a big pole across their shoulders. On the pole between the man hung the biggest cluster of grapes that anyone had ever seen. Other spies had their bags full and pockets full of good tasting pomegranates and figs. This land God had promised was the best land ever. So something to remember is that nowadays when we are going to the grocery store, we have all these fruits, all these vegetables. Well, back then, each land was different. So each part of the continent that they lived on, the big land that they lived on, had all sorts of different fruits. So before moving to Canaan, it's very possible that they had never tried any of those fruits. Those could have been brand new to them because it would have been impossible for them to go get it because they were from, you know, a different area, but the area didn't grow them. So that's why it was so special for them to get to try these new things and then coming back with all these new things that they had never gotten to try. But 10 of the spies, so that was two spies that had those, 10 of the spies told Moses, the land is amazing. Look at the fruit. 
but the people who live there are strong. Their cities are very large with big walls and we even saw giants. And the Israelites are just normal folk. But the spies were divided. 10 of the spies said we shouldn't go. But two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, told the Israelites something different. Caleb said, we should go. We can do it. God will help us. Caleb knew and believed what God had already told them. And so did Joshua. And remember, Caleb is thinking that God can do this. He's having faith in God because God has already had to come through for them. Or not had to come through, but God has already come through for them so many times that Caleb has faith and knows that God is always going to come through and provide for them and do what he promised, which is give them this land. But what God had said and what Caleb and Joshua said, it didn't change the other spies' mind. So two of them, Joshua and Caleb, were still very adamant that they are wanting it um, and to go and that they should go. But the other 10 were still adamant, no, we should not go. It's too large. There were giants. We shouldn't do it. The 10 spies had already decided, we can't be the people in this land. They are giants. We'll look like grasshoppers compared to them. Kind of like David and Goliath. David and Goliath, you think about it. The words of 10 spies made the rest of the Israelite people scared. They weren't trusting God. They wept, they griped, they moaned, and they complained about Moses and even God. The 10 fearful spies had now managed to scare thousands of people. The people were so upset that they decided to get rid of Moses and elect a new leader to go back to Egypt. God's miracles, love, and care were forgotten. So now that they had followed Moses all this way, he led them out of Egypt, out of the rule of Pharaoh, all this way to Canaan, and they're so close, they get a little bit scared, and they all say, never mind, forget it. So goodbye, Moses. Goodbye, Aaron. Goodbye, Caleb. We're getting somebody new, and we're heading back to Egypt. They, would, they were so afraid that they would rather go back to Egypt to be slaves than to go and to trust God to get into the land that he had promised them for so long. Moses and Aaron fell flat on their faces, praying to God with all of their heart. Meanwhile, Caleb and Joshua tried to get people to remember the promise that God had made. But the people talked about killing Moses, Caleb, and Joshua. What a problem. What should what Moses decide to do now? The Bible says that God had heard everything that the people had said. God said they had treated him with contempt, which means that they talked about him as if he didn't matter, like he didn't do anything for them. Now God had said that people would never see the good land. After all, they did not believe that God would give it to them. Only the two trusting spies, Caleb and Joshua, and the kids, people under 20 years old, would set foot on the amazing land that God had promised to give the Israelites. So now after all these amazing things that God has done to him, got done for the Israelites, because they didn't trust him, he said, well, if you're not going to trust me, then that's fine. Only the people who trust me or the kids will get to go into this promised land that I've been promising you for so many years. And God has come through on every promise that he'd ever done for the Israelites. The Israelites came so close to the land that God had promised to give them. But most of them never really actually got to see it because they did not trust God. But because Caleb and Joshua trusted in God, even when no one else agreed with them, they got to be part of God's promise. Sometimes we, like Joshua and Caleb, might be the only ones in our friends and family who are wanting to trust God. But even though we can hold on to what we know is true, when we sit down, we can trust that a chair holds us. This is just a small reminder of how much God, how much we can trust God. God will give us the strength we need to keep believing in him and even in difficult situations. This week, when you see a chair, I want you to remember that every time you sit in that chair, it's gonna be there for you and it will support you. So every time you see a chair, I want you to think about how the chair will always support you when you sit down, how God will always support you throughout your whole life and any endeavor that you have. I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of weeks until I see you next. And I want you guys to just be thinking about every time you see a chair, don't forget that God will always be there for you. Have a great week, guys.